that bar. Uh, that extra gear, that first three steps. Huge strides in the performance. That I might not be the player I am today. All right. Here we go. We're live. Boone, Jenner, and uh, myself. How's everyone doing anyway? Boone, how you doing, buddy? How's, uh, how's life back in Canada? It's good. Just uh, huh? finished the two-week quarantine. Uh, got back with the last couple of days training, so it was nice to get back to the fam. And uh, weather's been good, so the quarantine wasn't too bad. It went guy, it went by pretty quick. So yeah, good. Uh, but happy to be done with it. Oh, that's good, man. It, it is a bit of a grind though. Even you like, like if you stick to the rules 100, percent because we've had the quarantine twice now. Like our my family over this whole like year and a bit. And if you actually stick to the rules and don't leave your property. It's like, man, by day 10, I told my wife, like, I can't do this anymore. Like, there's no way. Yeah. And she's along me. She's like, no, you're not going anywhere. Go for a jog. We, we thought we had it down until exactly about day 10, 11, 12. And those were like, yeah. Felt like a week. The last three Holy days. The, the oh, home dude. stretch there was tough. It's a grind, man. Yeah. yeah. And you don't think, like, yeah, you're just, and you got a good spot. You know, whatever. Like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. The first week, you're like, just excited to be home. Yeah. Got enough to do yeah. around the house, and then you start. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I just want to see it, Tim Hortons or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, how, was, how, how are the workouts back? How would you feel? Pretty good. Pretty good so far. A little sore, but uh, that means we're, we're doing the right thing. So, uh, nice. Looking good. Yeah, Feeling good. good. Oh, that's good, man. That's really good. Um, How overall, I know, I know you know, not a, you're not even fresh in a year, just like a tough year, and not even like hockey wise or, or Columbus wise. But what was it like playing in 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 this year, like as far as COVID, in, like in the NHL? I know yeah. most kind of sucked talking to guys just because like you couldn't go for meals, you couldn't like go hang out, play cards, things like that. So was it a bit of a grind, kind of getting you know going through this year as far as playing at home, playing on the road? Was it just like let's just keep hammering games, keep playing games, and wasn't because I guess you missed a little part of that social part of the of the hawks. Yeah, yeah, I think that was one of the toughest parts. Um, just not being able to go to dinner or meet up with the guys, uh, especially on the road, you're going to dinners, especially for us. I think in Columbus, we had a lot of new faces. Yeah. That's kind of where you can bond mm -hmm. or get to know someone away from the rink. Uh, it could be a completely different person away from the rink than at the rink. So uh, that's, we kind of, you know, everyone was in the same boat. So we, we, we knew <laughs> that. I mean, we try to use going to the rink as your fun. I mean, after that, you're just heading home. Uh, guys are heading back to their families and whatnot and really not leaving the house otherwise, right? So uh, try to use that as the fun. Um, get as much out of going to the rink every day as you can, um, you know, when you can't meet up later at night for dinner or, or see someone's family and get to normal ways. So you try to do as much as you can at the rink, but that was de definitely a challenging part, I'd say, um, especially, like I said, with all the new faces, it was uh, a little bit strange that way. Um, yeah. but like I said, everyone's going through it. We were lucky where we didn't really have, a, a lot of cases we had, we had one case early, but we didn't have to shut down the rink for a week <clears throat> or, or anything like that. So we were one of the teams that was lucky that way, yeah. uh, that would have threw a wrench in it for sure. But, uh, yeah, I was telling Mitch today, like we, we didn't have to postpone games or move the schedule around too much. Um, there was the odd time where, Hey, we're not practicing today because of this, because of that, uh, COVID related, but. Otherwise, we're pretty lucky that way. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, that's that, that is huge. Now, did you like? Would you stick around the rink for like as long as you could, just because like, what, why am I going home anyway? Like, were the guys who were just rink rats, or did you guys yeah, have? Sure. You like, you can't stay this long. Yeah, a bit of both. I mean, uh, they want to get you in and out of there. Yeah, uh, you know, so they can do all the cleaning and all that too. But uh, at the same time, we had you know the meals at the rink, uh, not dinner, but like the lunch and. You stay pretty late some days, just chatting away with with someone else, right? And yeah. uh, you know, it's twelve or one o'clock, and kind of know when you go back, you're not you're not going to leave. You're going to cook dinner at home and and do that, and you're kind of yeah. saddled up for the rest of the day. So, uh, try to get the most out of it. Exactly. Totally. And, and By the time you left, other guys. So. Yeah, for sure. By the time you left, too, it's pretty wide open in Columbus, right? Like, how long did were you there where it was where it was open? It wasn't actually too long, was it? Or did you have a couple uh, months where you guys were? It was pretty open right when we got there. I guess like uh, start of the year was January. Uh, was it already pretty open then? Pretty open, um, you know, huh. in the city. But 
we we still had no fans. I don't know how many games it was. Yeah, yeah. The no fans for at least right. ten, I would say, to start the year. We had one game at ten percent, uh, which was just over two thousand fans, and then we yeah. went to twenty five percent the next home game after that. So that was a big difference. It's a big job. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> the fans, we had about just under five thousand. I think it was. That was you know a good um, you know energy jolt of energy whatever you want to call it because yeah you know starting to play in front of fans again it it had been a while so um that was good but that i mean everything around the city yeah i think restaurants and grocery store everything was was open um yeah you know you gotta be smart with the mask and everything like that but um you know in our situation we weren't really going for dinner or anything like that trying to uh you know we're getting tested every day you don't want to be out um you know getting it that way or whatnot so totally and you guys had kind of tight protocols too where you couldn't really you weren't really allowed to, like if you went out and socialized and had dinner with some buddies or whatever like it, that would be like looked upon very ill by the team <laughs> like the team did not want yeah you yeah you want to follow the rules and yeah like i said you don't want to be the one guy that that you know goes out and it just so happens that night and then you bring yeah. it to the rank and you never know what could happen right that's the thing you gotta be safe with it can spread quick so um, <clears throat> we were lucky like i said this year with every every guy on our team following the rules pretty good and and it showed i guess by uh, yeah. not having to miss games or shut down the rank or you know uh, a handful of guys getting at the same time so so you were legit playing every other day <laughs> pretty well like with yeah. no home games it was I, yeah i, I forget what the schedule was like it was 56 and 114 116 yeah. days something like that so it was you're busy with that, um, yeah. You know, totally. Players, I mean, you just get in the mode of practice day, game day, uh, you know, travel day, game day, travel day, whatever it is. Yeah. You, you just get in the mode, and um, yeah. Now playing the same team so many times, like I think back to like my my like when I played, which you know was <laughs> a long, long time ago. But no, you think you're playing <laughs> like, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and you're playing against guys, and you're just like, you know what I mean, like. And after three, four games against a team, there's five guys on that team I want to just like spear right in the neck. You know what I mean? Like I just, I remember I was a fiery guy and I get into dirty areas, or whatever. But I just, you get, you get fired up, man. And now playing a team as many times you guys played, like you know, in that that kind of four or five or six, seven team clump that you guys had. Like, what was it like playing these teams that many times? Like, did it get? Was it kind of getting like not? I don't want to say boring, but kind of like okay, these guys again, or was it like, man, I'm I want to get that guy, or it was you know what I mean? Yeah. Was there a lot of, like internal stuff? Or not too bad. Situations, I guess, like um, you know, you come come pissed off after a game or whatever. It'd be like, yeah. sorry, we got them six more times, or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And and it's yeah. all pretty soon, so you know, don't yeah. worry. Like uh, you won't forget. Or I mean, they did a pretty good job, I thought, in in our division where um, it wasn't more. I think we had one one time this year we played the same team four times in a row. But other right. than that, it was just two and two and two. Yeah. Like I know in some other divisions, teams are playing each other like six times in a row. It's like a playoff yeah, like, series in the middle of the yeah. season. Like totally. we didn't really have that, but like that's really when I think it boils boils over, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're playing, Definitely. Up, you know, five, six times. We could feel it with the four game series we had. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's definitely, you, you take a guy's number, you're seeing them in a week or two. Chances are. Yeah. So yeah. you get to know the, your opponent pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, it's definitely different that way. And it, it was different, you know, watching the other games and the other, you know, um, conferences, I guess, or divisions. Yeah. Uh, it just like, you know, half the guys, or you haven't seen that team this year, or you haven't seen them in a year and a half now, where it's like, right. it seems like a totally different, that's, you know, yeah, that's thing. Crazy. So, because you're just focused time. on your, your eight teams yeah. in your division, and that's what, you know, what matters. So that was different that way for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. And like, were you guys pretty aware of what was going on in other divisions or was it more just focus on your division, try to win your division? Because at the end of the day, like, let's just get out of this pool and then we can get to the playoffs. And you know what I mean? I think that was probably the goal for most of the teams, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, in a normal year, you're worried about your own division, but you're seeing every other team. So you know mm-hmm. who you're playing and you know, if they're doing good in their division, whatever, but it was, Yeah just our division you're focused on like you have to beat these seven teams you have to be in the top four and and you get a chance to play right so um it was good that way i you know you definitely pay attention in other ones but it it really didn't matter right it didn't matter who won uh the worst part probably was was uh when you needed help 
two teams are playing against each other and you don't want them both or you can't afford them both to get points, but someone's going to win, you know, right. the points are against you. Like you don't have a Western conference team coming to beat your team yeah. in your division, right? Like the points yeah, are staying totally. in the division every game. So when you're watching games in, in your division, um, whoever wins, it hurts you at the same time, you know? So for sure. Yeah, oh, definitely. Now, how sick was it to um, to not have like pre scouts and crazy? Like, I mean, your pre scouts are there, but like you played this team six times. You're like, we know yeah, what's going by, on. At least shortened up. Time, all like, stuff, right? <laughs> like, we know the power play breakout, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you just need a quick refresher. Like you, you've played yeah. them so many times, so it cuts uh, on. I mean, the, vi time. the video got cut down quite a bit that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pump for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can only yeah. show so oh, much, yeah. and I mean, you play them six, seven times you're like all right you've seen enough yeah at this point no, so. definitely <laughs> definitely now unfortunately and, and for anyone who doesn't know who's jumping in later or jumping in on this or sees this later on i mean obviously boone's played for Boone, what is it now six seven eight years eight. now just, eight just finished eight yeah eight years wow. eight. yeah it goes by and man like over <laughs> 100 games so congrats on that that's amazing yeah, thanks Blazer. Full, full pension you're all no i'm just kidding <laughs> 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 um, no, that, no, like that's. I mean, 500 games is awesome, man. That's a feat. Like that's unbelievable, man. And uh, and played young. Like played at I think it was 19, right? Boonery made the 20. I was 20. 20 okay. the first yeah. one, yeah. But I mean, you could have went back to junior as an OA, technically, right? Yep. Like, yeah. Um, and played World Juniors two times, which is like you know awesome. And I think won a gold medal. Got sus got sussy in one of the uh, suspended in one of the in yeah, one of them. Both, both of them actually. Both, oh, actually, years. both yeah. of them. Both years, yeah. The World Juniors <laughs> didn't treat me too well. Oh, well, you're excited. You're excited, man. You're yeah, the king. Yeah, I'm too excited. Exactly. <laughs> Did it the first year, and then you know, told myself I wouldn't do it the next year, and it was not. It didn't even make it to the round robin. It was in the preseason. That's in the preseason. So, yeah. <laughs> what was Not it? Good. Like, what was it? A, a, like a vicious hit? Yeah. The, the second yeah. year was a hit. It was a late yeah. hit. Um, yeah. I think the first year was a spear. Right. Uh, well, I mean, so, sometimes it happens by accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Back. I mean, yeah. Just get fired up. I never got suspended <laughs> in the OHL or anything when I was playing there, and then th that <laughs> happens. So. Yeah. And even in the NHL, I don't. Have you ever gotten suspended in the NHL? No, I haven't. Right, so it can be something, something comes out of you in the world junior, I guess. <laughs> Buddy, it's, the, it's the IHF, man. They yeah, exactly. Settle it's down, different man. Roles. Yeah, settle down. <laughs> Come on. It's a contact sport. Come on, let the boys play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what were like when you think back on world juniors and stuff like that, playing for Team Canada and you know, getting a chance to play in like some big games and stuff, what was that? What was that like overall? Because I know any kid in Canada grows up and they're like, Man, I can't, it'd be um, unbelievable to play and put the jersey on and all this stuff. But what was it like to get that opportunity and play in, in that kind of a that kind of a situation? Because I think it's you know, yeah. something to look at. I mean, the first year was in Canada too, it was at Newton in <laughs> yeah. Calgary, and um, you know, it sounds cliche, but growing up, like you watched it every year at Christmas, right? Totally. So for sure. I remember the past 10 years probably going into it. Yeah. Obviously, it was pretty big honor to, to be named to the team, and it, it hadn't really sunk in, you know, um, till you got there, till you got to Edmonton, and you saw the crowd and the hype around it, and everyone from back home is watching, and it's, you know, it's a Christmas holiday special now, you know. So yeah. um, it, was, it was pretty surreal, for sure. Yeah. Um, never played in front of a crowd like that. Um, gave me a taste of international hockey. I mean, played in the U18, U17s, but it was a it, it completely different level, especially with the crowd and the skill level. And um, we didn't do, do too well. Uh, we lost, or we won the bronze medal the first year and then lost in the bronze medal game the second year, which was in Russia. Yeah. Uh, but two, like, completely different experiences, but um, just what, you know, one being in Canada and one being in Russia is, it was cool to see both experiences and um, it definitely helped me, you know, with the crowds and getting to see other guys from other leagues and see guys from around the world, the best talent around the world at that point. And um, definitely a cool experience. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Do you notice a difference? Like even playing in the NHL, obviously you think of like the world juniors, international play and stuff, but do you notice a difference in how Russians play, Finnish players play, Swedish players play, North American players, or even Canada, the U.S. Like, do you notice any differences between those different countries and how they play and how yeah. they develop? You know, we all yeah, develop, think, me, right? So, yeah, you know, go ahead. You know, kind of eye-opening for that. I, at the time, I had no idea. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, when the world juniors was going on, like I didn't know the style that each team played. And now, you know, I can tell almost by seeing a guy play is like, I can tell what country you're from, you know, like, yeah. uh, they all have their certain styles and it's pretty cool because it's such a tight tournament, right? Every team's so good now yeah. that, um, you kind of know the American game, I guess, but, uh, it was eye opening to see the fans, the Swedes, like you said, the Russians. Um, so it was, it was cool that way for sure. How would you differentiate those different countries? Like if you even think of guys on your team that you play against stuff, like what, what kind of, I guess, skill set would you give or, or kind of hockey sense would you give to those different countries? Cause the way I like the way I kind of see it just quickly is like Canada's like chip chase hit play hard. Like and not to say there's not a ton of skilled players in there. Right. But, and then, you know, you look at like, even like uh, Russia, they don't like, they don't like getting given up the puck. They want to keep the puck as much as they can. You know what I mean? You look yeah. at the Swedes, like little like dishes, give and goes, things like that. But is there anything that pops up with you, these different countries on how they, cause the training model, some of these countries have are very intense, man. Like when you're seven years old as a hockey player, like we look at Canadian young kids and we think that all the parents are crazy and the hockey minor hockey system's messed up. And it kind of is, but man, some of those other countries, it's like way more intense for those, those elite nine-year-olds. You know what I mean? Like they're in, they're yeah. in the program, you know? So, um, but yeah, is there anything that kind of pops off with you of the, any of the different nationalities as far as how they play? Yeah, I think, I think you nailed it there. Like, um, you know, Canada can kind of be a mix, you know, play the skilled game or, or like the hard game rushes, yeah. obviously very skilled and, you know, doesn't like to dump it in. They'll, they'll turn back and that's just as hard as hard to play against, you know, sometimes totally. you're not used to it. Right. So, um, you know, the Swedes are very much like that with the puck possession and, and holding the puck a lot and not just coming in, shooting it. They, they're looking for the perfect shot, whatever it is. But I think I was more like thrown back of, of how skilled everybody was um, around the uh, around the year, around the world at, at that age, I guess. You know, you just see uh, the North Americans and the OHL, right? So you see the American, some Americans and then you see Canadians and then uh to see the the other countries the Finns come in and they're a great team it's like wow you know you never realize that um when you're when you're so young here so i think that was more eye opening than anything it is unreal though when you play and like even like as a youngster and we talk about spring hockey is like oh man it's a wild west like do you do it do you not do it right um and this is kind of a, a, a question for you as well as a comment but like did like did you play spring hockey growing up or like kind of that spring league? Because I think when you even go to spring tournaments in Toronto or different areas where you see all these like elite players, it's kind of a measuring stick. Like the World Juniors for you is like, whoa, man! Like this is like you know this is I'm seeing kids I've never seen before. So you come out of like yeah. Sudbury or Barry or London or Chatham and you go play in a big tournament in Toronto and you're like, whoa, these kids are yeah, not that won't fit in. But at first you're a little intimidated, right? You're like, holy yeah. shit! It is comparable for sure. I mean that's. Uh, growing up, I did play spring hockey, uh, three or four tournaments a year, I think in May yep. or whatever it is. And, yep. um, you know, all over the place, somewhere in the States, somewhere in Canada. And I think that was the first time you see, you know, Chicago teams or New York teams. Right. So you're seeing yep. a lot of different, you know, players, even players from the West coast, East coast in Canada. So you're used to just playing around for me personally around London and, you know, you see the Windsor guys, Toronto guys, whatever, but, um, you know, there's a lot more players that kind of get together and play in those spring hockey tournaments. Like you said, it's kind of more of a showcase for North America, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, so totally. um, it was pretty cool to play. Um, you know, you see players there and then you didn't think about it. And then a couple of years later, you're, you know, playing against them in the OHL or wherever it is. So yeah, um, yeah it's, it's cool to experience that, I guess. No, oh, definitely. And that's something too. Hey, Mitch, we talked about this as well as like with training and playing and stuff like getting yourself around like good players. So whether it's, you know, training, getting some other guys that are motivated and or girls that are motivated that want to get better, want to push like, uh, and then if you're playing, like get on teams that are, you know, sometimes if you can play spring hockey or whatever, that's great. Or, you know, double a triple a, but you know, push yourself a little bit, but get in front of like, get around those other players that are elite. I, it's so huge, you know? Yeah. And I think another thing we were chatting about too, is the, like multi-sport stuff. When you were younger, we've asked everyone kind of this question. Did you, did you play any other sports other than hockey or were you, uh, I mean, I know you grew up on a farm, right. And you were probably pretty physical that way too, outside of, uh, outside of hockey. Uh, but were there any other sports? Yeah. Uh, lacrosse, 
that was my sport in the summer. And you, and you played um, that up till what time, at what age? Like I have to what, say, Bantam it was. Bantam, yeah, that's, minor Bantam or okay. major Bantam. So a couple years before my like, draft year, and that's usually yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, hockey would end. You'd have some spring hockey going on, uh, which is just weekend tournaments. So you'd play lacrosse during the week. It started like May. I think I remember the best part about lacrosse. It was done by the end of June. And then July, August, you know, it was just like golf or hang around the house, hang with friends, yeah. whatever. Um, those were kind of off months until, you know, I got older and started training, obviously, in those months. But uh, growing up the whole way, I don't know how many years it would have been, probably six at least of lacrosse just playing in London there. Um, and then, I mean, when I'm really young, like soccer and that stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. I barely remember that. So, but I, I remember lacrosse. <laughs> lacrosse, and, and yeah. The sport and, you know, it was, it was exciting. I was excited to go play lacrosse too at the same point, right? And, yeah. And then you take the two month, you know, break off and you're excited to get back to hockey in September. So, um, or August, maybe the tryouts were and then start in September. So, uh, I liked how it was broken up that way. I think you get excited for both sports and, um, you know, obviously the hockey season was a lot longer, but, uh, lacrosse was, uh, was a lot of fun for me. Oh, was that okay. when you, when you transitioned right to, to hockey, was that partially cause you were doing more hockey specific training in the off season or was it, is it a decision that you made entirely or were coaches kind of saying, maybe you got to start doing more of this or that in the off season other than lacrosse? Um, yeah. Yeah, I was, like I said, two or three years before the OHL yeah. draft. And I got to see my brother go through the OHL draft and stuff like that. So I think I was just at my, the age where I was like, this is what I want to do. And um, mm -hmm. try to put a more focus towards that. Um, lacrosse was fun, like I said. But, um, you know, to start, you know, just thinking about hockey and, and put my mind towards that in the summer to, to, to start getting better and uh, do more skating and stuff. So I, and I think that helped me the next couple of years, you know, totally. up to the draft. So I think it was a good time to, you know, stop, but I, I'm still happy. I played the cross all those years and yeah. um, didn't do the hockey full year round, uh, you know, at that point. Yeah, for sure. And that's something we, yeah, always preach to kids that they should be taking some time off and doing other stuff, especially at those younger ages. Yeah. It's a different sure. sport. You, you meet different friends, it's a different team. Um, you know, you can learn a lot of things about, you know, a team or a sport, you know, mm -hmm. it's just not hockey or not hockey players you're dealing with other guys, you know. So uh, some guys in my cross team didn't even play hockey. You know, a lot of guys did, yeah. but a lot wouldn't too. So it's just different, um, getting different guys together, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, for sure, man. Is there anything right now, like playing in the NHL that, that you've picked up or that you do like outside of the game? Like, you know, and I'm, I'm giving you an example here, but like, when I was playing, I was bored because I wasn't, when I was like my first couple of years pro, I, I ended up picking up like guitar. My brother and sister, both musicians, they both had albums out. I couldn't play. And like I played piano when I was That's young. Right. Terrible. Right. So I picked up a guitar. Right. It was, yeah. And I, I was, you know, trying to, you know, and I learned a little bit, I could play a little bit, but is there anything that you've done? Like whether it's like getting into the stock market, getting into reading more, getting into like whatever, but you know, is there anything that you've done that you've noticed over the last little bit where like, are you the guy now that comes in the locker room and has a newspaper and like reads the newspaper? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I know exactly what you mean. You, you kind of need that, you know, a little out or yeah. an interest, I guess. And um, I guess the last year there's been a lot just with the COVID and all that. For sure. Like, yeah, totally. Yeah, I've tried guitar probably two or three times. My nice. roommate, my, yeah, it, it hasn't worked out. So I'm <laughs> Uh, sit over there, but uh, just an art piece at this point. But <laughs> yeah. my, my roommate, my first year, my first and second year in Columbus, Ryan Murray was really good at guitar. And um, okay, I'll buy one. He'll teach me. You know, went about a month. And it's not because of him. I gave up on it more so. And right. so, yeah, it may not be for me. So you, yeah. I think I've tried. You know, a lot of different things. Uh, even you know the stock market or listening to podcasts, different things. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't really have one right now, I guess. Yeah. I mean, in COVID, um, I actually started playing video games for the first time. I think that's just more COVID related. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. You know, being in lockdown last year for a few yeah. months. But what are you playing? That was just that was just more to talk to the guys on the on the mic. Totally. It's more of a social yeah. thing, you know. So nope. catch up with the guys. I'm not very good at that still. But uh, what are you playing? The what uh, what games are you playing? Is it Call of Duty. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, un- yeah. Okay, so this is like aging myself, man. But when I was playing, my roommate and I, we would like literally have practice, do our thing, whatever. And then when we'd shower and we'd be like the same, like at the same time, leave the rink, we would race home to get on that get joystick to play yeah. Call of Duty. And we'd play Call of Duty for like five yeah. hours in the afternoon. Yeah. It was crazy. It kills time for sure. It's unbelievable, man. It's and it's addictive. Like you yeah. think you're like, I gotta get back in the game. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> take a couple of weeks off. You're not very good. You're resting. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like five or six of us that that bought those uh you know Xboxes and stuff when when COVID hit. So we totally we, man. We still kind of do that a little bit and uh but, and, and just and different stuff, reading. Uh yeah, good. You, know, go through you got foods, the pop now foods. too, right? What's that? You got the you got the, new, got the, the new pop, pop now. now. That yeah, that's got to take been, a little bit of training and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. That was fun for sure. Yeah. So uh, how old? How old is uh, Five five months now. Okay. Five months the other day. So he's yeah. still he's still learning, but that's a lot of fun. I mean. So you guys. Him, uh, so. So you're still talking about like, did he poo today? How did he poo? Did he pee today? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> Where was it? Isn't that crazy. Well, oh, honestly, man. My wife and I, we got we got together, and then we got a dog. This is years ago, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm a dog person, man! I'm talking about my dog pooing, my dog peeing. Like, this is yeah. I mean, like can't talk to anybody about this." And then you have kids, Booner, and it's the same thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you pee today, you pee today, yeah. and then the dog, <laughs> the dog that was on top of the like the dog was on the mantle. The yeah. Dog becomes the bottom of the totem pole yeah. in like a day. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's I, crazy. Bet. I bet. I mean, that's funny. It's like. Before I, you know, got the dog, it was, you know, when you hear someone talk about their dog, it's like, yeah, 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 okay. And then so now annoying. it's like, yeah. I mean, if I'm talking with someone else that has a dog, it's all you talk about is your dog and my totally. dog. Totally, you're that guy. You're <laughs> exactly. Oh my god, I totally yes. get it now. Like after all these years, like, okay, I can't understand. <laughs> It's funny it's, how it works. It's a hey, yeah. kids are the same it thing. Then you go to a party, someone's talking about their kids. Oh, they did this. You're like, they're so annoying. And then yeah. you have kids, you're like. You kind of want to talk about no, your it's kids. a two, <laughs> two hour combo about it, and it's hilarious. Exactly, yeah. it's the best, yeah. man. Yeah, no, but that's been fun. Got uh, oh, that's good, Harley. So, yeah, yeah, he's been fun. And uh, Harley. do you find that uh, that that you've gotten to know like way more neighbors and stuff now because you're like, well, yeah. I know you're just coming out of it, but like you're just walking around now. People are like, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, you live here, and like, yeah, yeah, right? I mean, it's a <laughs> combo <laughs> opener too. Yeah. Uh, in a big buildings, and there's one little park out front. And, uh, I mean, we joke all the time, but we don't know the, the owner's names. We just know the dog name. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. I saw the dog's name and yeah. the, the dog's name's mom and dad. That's it. Yeah. You forget their really? names, but you know, every dog out there, yeah. You know the dog's name out there, but you forget, you know, the parents' yeah. names. So that's kind of funny, but, uh, yeah, no, totally. it's funny how it works. Yeah, a hundred percent. I want to talk just a little bit. I want to get in a little bit about, about training with you too, Booner, because I know like you've obviously had eight years and you and you play hard. You're not a perimeter guy. You're a go to the net guy. You're playing hard areas guy. Um, how much do you find that your training's changed over the last bunch of years? You know what I mean? And like you've been like, I mean, five hundred something games and five hundred, I think, thirty something in in eight years is awesome. Like you haven't missed a ton. You missed a little bit of time here and there, but. Um, how like how has your training changed from you know back you know let's say eight years ago to now and if you think a little bit along the way like what have you done differently what are some things that are really important to you now that have kind of changed from you know back in the day type thing yeah it's it's changed you know quite a bit i think um you know when you first start working out you don't really know too too much about it and um kind of trying to lift as much as you can and, and do this squat as much as you can run as fast as you can and all that and um, you know, the last couple of years, it's kind of more of, you got to be doing it in the right, you know, your body's got to be moving the right way and, um, you know, to be able to get there. Um, you know, you can't just pick it up and, and do it. If you're doing it wrong, it's going to hurt you more than help you. Uh, I mean, Mitch can touch on this has been a big part of it, but uh, a lot of other things I would say is, you know, for me as your core muscles and all your small muscles, you're not just working out you know, your pack, your bicep and your quad, you know, it's, it's a lot more muscles and shoulder muscles and back muscles and core muscles and hip muscles, and everything that goes into it, that makes a big, big difference. Uh, I think you get all that straight and then you can start building from there. You kind of have to have that foundation. And, uh, but that's the last couple of years that, uh, really opened my eyes to that. Um, you know, and it's helped me, you know, tremendously. I mean, the body feels way better. Um, you feel just as strong. Say you're not, 
lifting as much, but you can get there a lot quicker if you want to, as long as everything else is good and it's not, it's not going to hurt you, I guess. So, yeah, uh, it's the main thing I've learned, um, you know, in the last few years, uh, I think you're always looking for something every summer, you know, a little, um, you know, you hear something or someone's trying something you want to, you want to try and you want to learn each summer. And I think you can yeah. learn more and more about your body every summer, what works for you and what doesn't. So, uh, it's constantly, uh, you know, you're thinking about it and you're trying to work on it, you know, with guys like Mitch and, and yourself, even on the ice. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it's fun. I, I really enjoy that part of it now is, is coming back and, um, trying to see if what we can do different or what we can tweak and, you know, get you to that next level, I guess. Do you, uh, and I'm going to put Mitch on the spot here a little bit, but like, do you think, cause the one thing I remember, like, you know, again, back in the day, but like, I did a lot of stupid things and I worked out too long. I spent way too much time in the gym. Like when I look at it overall, like I probably wasted a lot of time. You know what I mean, thinking I was doing the right things, thinking I was, you know, getting the workout in or whatever. But do you find that like, Meeting a guy like, and I, I'm being biased here to Mitch because I, I love him and I think he does a really good job. But, um, like meeting a guy like Mitch and starting to go through his workouts, did it kind of change a little bit? Like, and I'm not, you know, there's other guys out there and girls out there like Mitch, but Mitch is very dialed in, very like into what you need, right? So, was it was that a bit of an eye opener for you too when he started to like kind of look at you and say, no, you need this, you need this, you need this? Because it was a couple of years ago that you came and like, I need a bit of a change. I want to try something different. And then, you know, you and Mitch connect. Absolutely, and, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think, like I said, that's kind of when it opened my eyes to that. And, um, you know, you know, just meeting Mitch and then a, a, a couple of days in, he, you know, gets to know your body, gets to know what's, how it's moving, what's, yeah. you know, working well, what's not working well and, and make those changes, you know, put, he'll put it into your program. You work on that. And like I said, that kind of builds your foundation of, Hey, if you want to be here, you're not going to get there unless, you know, you start here and you have to build it up the right way. So I think that was, um, you know, a big testament to Mitch and, and how he knows each each of our bodies and what works well for us, what, you know, you know might not work for this guy, but it works for this guy and what he needs to work on it as opposed to him. Everyone's body's different, right? So, yeah. um, you know, for him to know what uh, each of us need, and I, and I think the other guys would say the same thing, right? So, um, no, it's been great, um, you know, working with him. And like I said, the last few years is, probably the best I felt that way. Um, oh, that's awesome, in the gym and then Appreciate I think that. that car- the he carries on to the ice, obviously, right? So, yeah. And, I mean, feel free to shit on him, too. Yeah, I mean, you can totally <laughs> – yeah. Yeah, 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 thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Appreciate the pump <laughs> up there, guys. <laughs> no, but I think it's – you know, it, it is true. I mean – Yeah, and the reason I asked – The finishers are questionable, you know. Like, <laughs> there away, you but... go. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. It's funny, Booner. So, Mitch was putting out videos right at the start of COVID like a year ago. And he was putting out these like a bunch of videos for like at home workouts and stuff. And I was doing them. I had my kids at home. My wife was working and I was doing them. They were great. And I was posting some videos about them and put them on Instagram, just like promote what he's doing. I thought it was great. But then every once in a while we'd be doing a workout. It's like 40 minutes in. I'm like, I'm 40 plus. I'm like, I'm good. Like I'm topped out. I'm good. And then he's like, all right, we got a little bonus round here. And I'm like, you, and I would text him like, you, Mother, yeah. what are you doing right now, man? This yeah. is brutal. Like to your point, it's always like little sneaky little like FUs yeah, little, in the little, work. Little yeah. finisher, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. You have to throw that in there, and you, you just want to shut it off so bad. I know. <laughs> yeah, totally. A lot of times, uh, all right, let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's good to push. You know that little extra too. So you know what we need to get in the gym. Actually, Booner is a circle. So that whenever you guys are done, like the vets are doing the NHL, you just go down in the circle, you get down on your knees and start stretching out. And then yeah, like exactly. practice is over, right? Practice exactly. Is over. Yeah. yeah. Wrap it up, grab a full bowler. <laughs> yeah, let's say let's go. We're done. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. Uh no, what I, I wanted to bring that up because I think it's really important when parents are out there and they're looking for strength coaches and looking for people to help them out. And they don't know what to look for. And I think the biggest thing is getting that connection that they get you, they understand you, they're they're they know what you want, what you need, but also they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're giving you and you're getting results. So you know what I mean? Like you're maybe at a, a whatever, a bad shoulder, bad back, whatever, but it, you're getting those results. And I think that's a huge, huge part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So no, I yeah. I mean now that he's gone, I can pump his tires a little more, but uh yeah. he he looks at every aspect, right? It's not just the strength, it's it's stretching totally. and yeah, uh, help with the food. Uh, it'll help with the, you know your cardio, 
speed, quickness, yeah. all that. So he, you know, touches on everything. It's not just strength or it's not just, you know, I want to get strong. It's just a lot of other aspects. Yeah. You guys hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, you're good, bud. I, I didn't hear anything you just said. So good. 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 You guys got all the carving out of the way there. And, uh, yeah. And, and I'm back. Watching you I don't know what happened. We're talking, <laughs> about, tight, we're talking about your tight jeans. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, and COVID perfect. workouts. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good. I'm glad you asked that question, Blazer. I was thinking the same, the same thing, and uh, that was awesome to hear you just even talk about how your mindset's changed, Boone. Like from the beginning yeah. to the to to now, like from when you first started training. It's like you said, and I, and it's I see it with a lot of young guys. They just want to lift the most they can, run the fastest they can, and. I think part. I think that process sometimes is important too for kids to just try to go full throttle at you know 15, 16 years old and feel what it feels like, and then you gotta you gotta learn yeah that it's I more mean, it's more than that you know it's like I get and, it you know because everyone starts working out you know kind of at the same age and your buddies are lifting more and you want to yeah. get there right so everyone yeah. starts but <clears> I think you know once you start to learn a little bit more it's. It's not so much about what he can do on me, you know what I mean? It's no. what works for you personally. So yeah, I, I think that's a big, a big thing. That's uh, I, I mean, everyone kind of goes through it, right? So I think yeah. the quicker you can maybe learn it, as get kid, it, yeah, uh, it'll yeah. probably benefit you more. Yeah, like we'll put a dowel on on your kid's back or something like that. Like, all right, we're gonna practice this hinge pattern or whatever and they're looking at you like come on man like are you kidding me? Give me the bar and then we'll do that for a bit then we'll give them a bar they're like can i just put a little more on so i mean you're not very good at this but right yeah sure give it a try once <laughs> and then it's okay you're not doing that again yeah exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah but it is and... it's a process for sure for sure and it's, it's fun to to feel the difference too i think because like, i mean i've even, i've gone through the same thing when i was 15 16 years old not training for hockey necessarily but pretty much just beating the crap out of my body, trying to lift as much as I can. And when yeah. you start, when you make that change and you bring more purpose to your training and the purpose isn't just putting more weight on the bar or running at a faster time. I mean, that purpose is still there, but you have more intention around every single exercise that you're doing, which I think makes training. I know for me personally, even now a lot more fun. Like you're not just going in and throwing weights around, but you there's more purpose to the whole session than just, yeah, lifting exactly. stuff up you know and um yeah i think it's key to have that realization of eventually for everyone and uh oh, i appreciate all the kind words <laughs> yeah. well, when um, you're off we were saying <laughs> like, okay. i'll have to listen to it later i'll have to tune no, no in the, the recording no <laughs> um but like even coming from like an old bugger like me like I've never done a one leg, like a, like a pistol squat, I think it is, right, Mitch, with one leg. Like, squats, down, pistol squats, yeah, yeah. Like down one leg, right? I've never really, yeah. I've done it when I was younger for sure, but not like, and it's something I wanted to do over, not over COVID, but over the time this last year, whatever, it's something I was working on and no weight, like I can add a little bit of weight to it now, but like no weight. And it's something that like, for me, even as a older guy, I'm like, it's not even a hard exercise. It does get hard, obviously, if you do, do a number of reps, but it's like, just controlling your body, not like falling over on one leg, which was, which I was doing all the time when I first started doing it, but I'm actually like, you know, this, I never said this to anybody. So internally I'm like, I'm kind of proud that I can do this now where I can get down into a pistol yeah. squat back up and even do like, you know, a woodpecker or like a, you know, one, one legged hamstring, you know, and then come back out to it. Right. So I'm like, but those are things, you know, to your point, that's a boring exercise, man. There's no weight to it. There's no tempo to it. There's no like, you know, so, but is it effective? Like, yeah, for a young guy, if a young kid could do that at 10, 12, 13 and control his body that way or her body that way and be able to do it, like those are so, you know, I think that's the other <clears> thing. <throat> Good strength coaches that understand the game, know what's going on and know what you need and not just putting you in situations that aren't going to, you know, that are, oh, it's great. You did 300 pounds on the, on the, you know, squats. That's awesome. But is that really what you need? Like, probably not. You know what I mean? So at that point, so I think it's, yeah. That's kind of why I wanted to bring it up because I think it's something that like a lot of parents and, and even coaches need to understand. Like it's maybe that guy or that girl is not the best strength coach. Like they're just pumping them through routines and weights and they have no idea what they're, what they're kind of focusing on. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, if you just said, go ahead, Mitch. Yeah. I was going to say just to touch on that one more time. So we'll have uh boon reiterate this, but like I, when we're saying all this technical stuff, it doesn't mean this, the workouts are easy either. I think a lot of people oh, yeah. sometimes, no, sometimes think we're like, oh, we're talking about technique and we're talking about, you know, doing it at a whatever temp, like pace or tempo. Like, oh, well, those are easy workouts. Like, 
maybe in the process of learning how to do stuff properly, there's some easier, it is a little easier, but once you dial that stuff in, like they're not easy workouts and, and and Boone's hit some, yeah, some like all time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Boone's hit like hit some all time PRs on exercises like trap bar and all that. Um, not right away, but after training for a little while at lower loads then the body feels good and you can do way more because you feel great because you feel good. But yeah. Yeah. Sure Anyways, did. what were you going to say there, Blazer? Oh, I was going to say, I got a couple of questions that came in. I got a couple that came in like offline, a couple that came in online, but um, yep. I'll, I'll give it to you, Bruner, and, and feel free to answer it how you like, but uh, do you have any tips for shorter players, like hitting and just in general, like since you're since, since seeing guys like Nathan Gerby and guys like Goudreau, like how do those shorter players have success at high levels? Like when you think of small guys that you play against, like why are they hard to play against? Especially, you know, yeah. some, even, even, uh, Kirby's a good one for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, you think of Gujo, you think of, um, Gallagher just off the top of my head. Yeah. I'd probably yeah. have Kirby and, uh, and Cam Atkinson on my team as well. Sure. Um, yeah. Two kind of different style players, but, um, are both, you know, smaller players around the league. And, um, you know, I think Cam, we, we kind of call him the water bug where he's, buzzing around in the corners doing his cutbacks and he's so hard to contain and uh he gets so much free ice that way and um i think the thing with with them is that they're really small and shifty but they still go to the hard areas and like even as a big guy it's hard to you know move them out of there because they're so quick at getting in there and their timing's so good at you know they score a lot of goals right inside the blue like a big guy would or whatever um so i think um you know, for a smaller guy, I, I mean, I don't see much difference. I think there's so many good players around the league that are big or small right now. So, um, you know, I think everyone's, you know, I think a Gerby, you know, for instance, he's not scared of anything. He goes in on a four check like he's 6'4", you know. So uh, where Cam is more just he gets the puck and he's so dangerous, so elusive uh, when he gets it. So that would be my answer, I guess. No, I love it. Yeah, no, it's good. I think, yeah, I think a lot of what you said is exactly what I would say. Like the other thing too, with a small guy, I was a small guy when I played. So if you're small, you like, I, I know I was like this. I had small man syndrome. If you call me short or bald, I'd punch, try to punch you in the face. Like, I was like, <laughs> 100%, full disclosure. Like I was that guy. Like I just sort of got man in junior, like this is years ago, but I had a rule that if a guy asked me to fight 100%, I'm going to fight him. Like it didn't matter who it was. And there was times like we were OT or like, you know, there's a game seven or we were in a big game. Like I would, I'd, back, I'd say no, but yeah, you call me on, I'm never backing down. And that's, was, was my thing. Right. So as a smaller guy though, I think the big thing is playing like you're six or four, just like you said, like playing like you're a big guy, just going in and hitting, not, not crazy. Just finishing your hit, going to the net, all that stuff. Or you're a small guy who's like crazy skilled. Like a, like, like a Johnny Goudreau, he's not going to go and like spear you. You know what I mean? He's not going to go try right. to take anything with you, but he still plays kind of tough. Like, and I mean, tough as in like, he'll take a slash. He'll go yeah. to the net. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's he's still, to play against, you know, for sure. Yeah. Right. So, but he's also very, very skilled. So you can kind of like, if you look at the barometer, you've got like your smalls, so you got to be kind of tough and play hard, or you got to be really skilled and still play. You got, if you're small, skilled and soft, it's really hard to play in this league. Mm-hmm. Or, or like in the NHL, right? Like, let's yep. be honest. You know, if you're small, skilled, and a little bit of toughness, you can play. If you're small and tough, you may have a chance to play. You know what I mean? Play in a yeah. in a situation. But yeah, I think that's the big thing. It's like you got to have some toughness no matter what. But you know, if you're six foot four and you're soft and you have crazy skill, you might get by a little bit and play a little bit until guys find out. But you know, it's 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 a lot different for the small guys. So I think that was you know great advice by you, Booner, as well. But I think it's yeah, you gotta be you gotta have either high, high, high skill or some toughness to you as well. And I think as a small guy, you gotta be quick. You don't have to be darty. You don't have to be like fast guy in the league. But like, you yeah. know, Atkinson's got some speed, man. <laughs> like derby has yeah. got some speed. They got some like little bit of pop to them. I think yeah. that's due to you, right? Yeah. Um. I had a question come to me uh, today by a buddy of mine and he'd asked like, ask Booner, like, like, why did he make the NHL? And I, I'm not saying that in a rude way. It's just, um, your second round pick to the, to, to, the, to Columbus, which is awesome, obviously. Um, and then, but the big knock on you was like, oh, I can't skate. And like, obviously you had grit, you had grind, you had all that stuff. But, uh, the question more was to, posed to like, 
you know, in your mind and stuff like that, obviously you always wanted to play in the NHL, but what drove you to play in the NHL? Like what were the things like, I'm going to play in the NHL because this is like what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this to be able to get there. Like what were some of the things for you that like got you into the NHL? Um, yeah, I think, you know, when you, for me, I guess it was, um, you know, in the OHL with the NHL draft coming up and I mean, it's so, you're so new to everything. Right. And I think the, the eye opening thing for me was going to Columbus for development camp and training camp and seeing all the other guys and the draft picks. And, um, I'd say that really when it hit home for me, it was kind of the camp before, uh, I made the team. It was like the year before where I was like, I don't, I didn't really have a great camp, but, um, that really motivated me because I was, I was looking forward to going into that camp and, you know, trying to look good. And I, you know, didn't have the greatest camp. So I think that next full year had a year to think about it and, and be ready. And, um, I kind of just went into that camp where this is what I want to do. I want to make the team. And I think, you know, it's, it, it comes with opportunity and taking advantage of that opportunity. You know, it could be one or two games. It could be whatever, um, you know, a, a practice, a scrimmage, uh, trying to take advantage of that opportunity. And that opportunity was that camp for me. And, um, it went well. I just tried to, do anything I could, um, you, you know, try to look at the team. What do they need? Where can I slot in and, and try to just play that role. And then once you, you know, you get there, you want to just keep moving up from there. But, um, at the time, I think, you know, I was just always driven to, to be on that team, I guess you'd say, I mean, yeah. I, as soon as I got to Columbus, I'm like, this is where I want to be. This is the team I want to be on. So I just kind of try to work as hard as I could to get, you know, there and, um, like I said, you need the opportunity and I got the opportunity at that camp and, um, had a couple camps underneath my belt at that time, kind of knew what to expect. So, uh, I think that really helped me. It wasn't, uh, you know, I knew some guys, knew the team a little bit more, the coaches and everything. So, um, you know, I was just really focused on that particular camp, um, coming off kind of a not great one that I was happy with. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that motivation too helped me. I got, I, I got to ask you cause I always ask players, like, you know, players will tell me, like, I want to play junior or I want to play AAA or I want to play in the NHL or whatever it is, right? And I was like, well, how bad do you want it, you know? And they're always like, oh, no, I, I, I want it bad. And I'm like, no, no, how bad do you fucking want it? Like, how, what are you willing to do to make that next step to that level? Because you know as well, you went through the steps, man, and you grinded it. Like, obviously, you were a high draft pick. You played in World Juniors. Like, your path was probably, like, not easy at all. But I'm just saying, like, you had a smoother path, but did you have that voice in your head that was like, I got to do more. I got to do more. And I know your family and I know your background and, and, and we probably get in this a little bit, but like you were not from like a country club family. You're from like a farmer, older brother taking slap shots on you and you're tipping them with nothing on. Like you're from, you know, the three boys beating the crap out of each other. Like you're probably working on the farm. You're doing stuff. Like it's like, no hard work is part of what we do. And you know, so you go to camp, you lay a bit of an egg in your mind. You're like, I didn't do well. Like when you go back the next year is like, I'm taking that guy's job, man. Like in your mind, like, cause I know I was like that. Like I was like, when I went to places and I was on the third line, like I'm stealing that second line center spot. Like I am, I'm, and I, I love the guy. He's a great guy. He's my teammate, but I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm taking his job, you know? And I'm not saying like that you're, <laughs> that, that you're like always gunning for the other thing, but it's like, when you want to get to that point, like what was your mindset like there? Were you kind of, yeah. How that works in your head? Um, I, I will say it was it was kind of like you said you you want to play in the OHL. I think that was my first goal is getting drafted to the OHL, and I think you know a year before that I worked as hard as I could to get there. And yeah. as soon as I got there, it was almost like okay, what I did this past year worked almost. You know, like hard work worked, and uh, you know now I want to make or get drafted to the NHL. Okay. Well, that's going to be harder. So I knew you had to work a little harder, do a little extra here, do this. Then it's like, boom. Okay. That worked. Now I want to play for the world juniors. Got to, you know, put in more then. So it just keeps elevating. And I think your goals change every year. Uh, and if you're talking about going from, you know, the OHL, to the NHL, it's a big step and you're going to have to put in a lot more than, what got you to the OHL, I guess. So that's kind of the way I looked at it. Honestly, yep. it was, all right, you know, I just worked as hard as I could for a year, and now I'm here. Like, I'm going to do it again, plus some, see what happens yeah. there. You know, like, 
<clears throat> leave no stone unturned, you know, kind of just do it all you can. And, you know, if it works, it works. So that's kind of, you know, the mentality that way. And I think every year, you know, I, I know it's the NHL and it's like, okay, what, what steps, but I still think my goals change every year uh, is where, you know, I want to put in, I have to put in more each year to right. achieve those or get to where I want to be. So yeah, just the way I look at it. Oh, I, I, lo- I love it, man. Yeah. And I, I think like for anything, right, Mitch, like, well, you're trying to get a better body, you're trying to get stronger, you're trying to get faster, whatever. You got to put the work in, man. And that's the bottom line. Like, you can try, you can, yeah, I guarantee right now, we can go on Amazon and find a pill that'll get you faster in a minute. Like, right? Nice. Yeah. You gotta, well, you gotta, yeah. You got to put the work in, man. And it's, yeah. Well, and what I've seen over the years, too, is like the guys that, <clears throat> for example, you said the first camp wasn't your best camp. Some guys walk away from that and they're like, oh, shit, like, fuck, it wasn't very good. I guess I just can't do it. Whereas other guys, they have those experiences. Everyone has, they like, call it a, a failure or a shortcoming, but then you walk away from it and in your own mind, you're like, well, that means I need to work harder. So it's either I'm going to work harder or, or I'm, I'm not cut out for this. And so the guys that have that mindset of I'm not cut out for this usually don't, don't make those jumps. Yeah. So I, yeah, well, totally. It's right. It's awesome. Yeah. No, definitely. I think that's huge, man. And, that voice in your head, I was talking, I just had another call with a, a good buddy of mine from back home and he was a baseball player. And we, I talked to him, I'm like, Hey, do you ever have this voice in your head when you're younger? Like, and I've never really talked to anybody about this, to be honest with you. And I think we all have a voice in our head. I talk to myself all the time. Like I have a, I have a buddy in my head that I talk to all the time. Like, just, <laughs> right. Like just, you're an idiot. What, like, why'd you, been, <laughs> right. Like that voice. Right? So yeah. I don't like him half the time, but Absolutely. sometimes like, Oh, I just got one more beer. I like that guy, but I don't like the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I have that voice in your head where like, why are you going for a run right now? Like it's six o'clock at night, whatever it is, right? Or six o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night, whatever it is. But like, cause my voice in my head is like, you, you need to do something, you know? And, and a lot of people can shut that voice down be like, no, no, Netflix is way better. Or I, I don't, I just want to go to bed, which is fine. Right. But I think that voice, man, is what uh, I know for me personally, that's what drove me. Like that's that voice in my head was Thank God it was positive or it was very negative. It shamed me a lot to get to do my things I needed to do. You know what I mean? Like it, so I think yeah. like, you know, and I, 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 I haven't even talked to anybody about this and I, I was talking to him, my, my buddy about this and he's like, yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I have a voice in my head too. Like that, you know, I, I right. I think we all do. Right. And, you push yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, <clears throat> sometimes like, I think, you know, you're people who push themselves is they got that. Right. If you don't push yourself, you might not. If you can push yourself, you definitely got it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. It kind of comes to that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I so I yeah, I think those are like for young kids too. Like, you know, we think sometimes like, man, they're working really hard, but they don't really don't know what hard work is. Like they have no idea. And I'm not saying like mortgages and getting a job. I don't mean that. It's just like they get to a threshold of like the beep test, for instance. A great example. Beep test, they get to level seven and they're like shutting her down. Like, come on, dude. Like that's embarrassing man you just shut <laughs> mentally like that's you just you're a mental mushroom like you need to go you know so and then the next time they do it they do 11 like, that's amazing man you jump three or four levels like so it's like you can battle, <clears throat> you know more than you yeah. think can. i think that's a is, on top, yeah yeah totally and that's i think that's a big part of playing the nhl for years man is like battling through because you go through everyone thinks you got a cushy job boo and you play in the nhl you make money it's great you travel it's all awesome but I mean, if you show up in game 54 and you're on the fourth line or you're on the taxi squad, like mentally, that just like, wow, like that's, yeah. you know what there's I mean? Definitely a lot of highs and lows that way. Right. right. Yeah. There's a grind there, man, of playing a bad yeah. game, whatever. Right. So totally. Just keeping an even keel or keeping, um, you know, knowing yourself and knowing what, what you can do and um, what totally. makes you successful. So. Uh, it's easier to turn the other way, right? But that won't get you too far, I guess. So um, yeah. there's always challenging times. I think the more you go through it, the more you learn about yourself that way and how you can get out of it, you know, the quicker the better, obviously. So uh, you yeah. learn a lot about yourself that way. Oh, for, totally. uh, for sure, man. Definitely. Okay, I'm gonna throw, I'll throw another question up here for you, Booner. And that, yeah. it's kind of got cut off, but I'll read the rest of it. But um do you think there's been a recent surge in creativity? Like for instance, when I see Pasternak thread the puck through his legs and, and go hard to the net, I can't recall seeing players doing this last tw- or 20 years ago, like doing the same thing. 
Um, what do you think of the league though? So even <clears throat> eight years ago, never mind 20 years ago, because I agree, I think 20 years ago it's changed tremendously. But even eight years ago, five years ago to now, how different is the league and the skill set when you guys see guys like McDavid and Matthews and you know McKinnon and McCarr and Hughes that come into the league? What how different has it been? Yeah. Um, no, I definitely agree. Uh, I have seen a surge in creativity, I think even from my first year, like you said, eight years ago till now, the skill level, I think has gone up, you know, a lot. Um, there's definitely skilled players then too, but um, guys are trying different things. Guys are, I think it kind of goes from, you know, the speed aspect. I think the game's gotten a lot faster where a lot of these guys can, can make the same plays, but they're just moving a lot quicker than guys, I guess, oh I guess in the past are doing. So it's yeah. pretty spectacular, and that's where it's kind of like the skills going up. It's it's the skill and the speed. These kids are doing it at a high high speeds, high level, in traffic. It's uh, you know pretty impressive. I, and I definitely do think uh, you know there's a lot more skill in the game, a uh, little less of the the grinding, but the grinding's still there. So uh, I think it's. A mix of both, but I, I definitely see a surge in the in the creativity and, and the things guys are trying. I guess like you, you see all the goals from behind the net, um, you know, scooping it up and in and, and tucking it in, and um, you know, I don't think that happened or anything like that. So I, I definitely agree with them. Yeah, stuff that was happening in practices is happening more in games now too. <laughs> yeah, I think guys. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you try guys are practice it works, and guys aren't afraid to try it in game now. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I totally agree, man. And I, I, I agree with you. I think the other thing too, is it's like, for instance, if, if you Booner in junior or even before put the puck through your legs and like try to score a goal, like your dad was coaching you maybe in, in minor hockey or your junior coach, you'd be like, what are you doing, man? Like putting your puck through your legs. Like, I you know when I was doing it, if I did that when I was young, I would have got benched or my coach would have lost his mind or one of my teammates would have punched me in the face. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Like, and now yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of mindset, yeah. And even as coaches, like we're teaching more of that stuff. Like I, I, for instance, like the Michigan goal, I think is, is awesome. It's a great goal, but how many guys in the league are pulling that off and have the balls to pull that off? Right. So yeah. is it a, is, is it an applicable skill? Probably not overall to skill development, but some guys are going to try it, right. Putting the puck through your legs. I think that is something that, that actually works, man. You can pull it across, yeah. pull through your legs, protect it, you know? So a lot of, yeah. You can use it right? all over the ice, I guess. Yeah, like corners on one on ones yeah. on whatever, right? Two on. Like, <clears throat> I, there's certain things that I think are very game applicable. And I love the creativity. I love how guys are getting more creative and players get more creative. Skill coaches are getting more creative, and um, I think it just elevates the game. But at the same time, Booner, with all that said, okay, about these high end, like, and we look at like McKinnon's and McDavid's, like, what are those? Those are like one percent of the league. Right, yeah. maybe two or yeah. three percent of the league of like high end. Maybe every team has one guy who's like really, really, really high end. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for you and I, I this is something I, th I was thinking about today, and I was like, okay, put your Superman cape on right now, and and tell me like what are like the three or four main skills that you would need as like Superman to be really good in the league? And I'm not saying like scooping pucks, but like. When you think of the NHL or even playing like you know, going from like minor midget to junior and junior to the NHL, like what are three or four skills that would be like, if I just was better at this, I would 100%, you know, like that would help me speed up my, my trajectory or whatever it is. But is there anything, it could be one, could be two, could be five skills, doesn't matter. But is there anything that kind of pops in as far as like, man, these are things that are huge at the next level? Um, You know, I think... I mean, you can, I don't want to go too broad, you know, with the skating and the puck yeah. skills and the hockey IQ. I think everyone knows that. I think one that's big would be like being hard on a puck or, or being able to protect a puck. I think, um, I think that's a big skill when, when, you know, say you're a smaller guy or a bigger guy, you're going to have to protect pucks. You want to be able to hold on, um, to pucks and all that. So, um, you know, you got that. You got to be able to think the game. I think you can always, um, you know, it's hard to like sit, you know, narrow down working on hockey IQ, but I do think you can work on it. And, um, you know, I think that decision making with the puck a little quicker, I think that will help a lot. I think, um, you know, kind of seeing the play or trying to make a decision quicker, moving that puck that split second quicker can go a long way as well. So 
those are two things about you know came into my head I think obviously you know with the hockey sense skating puck skills competitiveness you're going to need that uh, no matter what but I think you know those are just two other things I guess I would add that um, would help you at the next level that you're trying to get to I guess um, you know along with those things I think you obviously have to work on those as well I love it man no it's good and even like the I, I think you know when you mentioned puck protection I think that's such a big thing like, you know to have a puck and hang on to it right and don't yeah you know be able to make it's a play with a it a little thing but hey you're gonna have the puck on your stick more and you're gonna make more plays more things are gonna open up yeah. Um, so I definitely think there's a big aspect in that of, uh, you know, every, someone comes and you're just, you know, doing the headlights, you want to get rid of it quick. Yeah. Um, well then you're going to be easy to check and easy to play against, I guess, you know, so. Yeah. What do you think, uh, a Boone, what do you think of deception? Like adding deception yeah, to your game? Like, it's just, like something, you know, the last few years, Yeah. you know, that you hear, you know, a lot of skills coaches or whatever that. Uh, people work on it and it's it, it's a huge skill I think, yeah um, you know looking one way you know passing back this way you know i think that's big you know faking a shot sliding it over getting that demand to bite yeah on you know trying to block the shot and sliding it over um those are the things that come to my head with deception you know looking one way or you have your hand set one way and it goes <coughs> i think that goes a long way totally um and it's hard to check i mean i've play i i think the most deceptive guy is panarin and i got to play with him for a couple of years and he's so good I still didn't after a couple of years still wouldn't know where the puck was going <laughs> right. the blue line, like, it could be on that guy's stick back door or there or short side cheese off the stick like, you don't know <laughs> and i think it's so hard to you know it's it's scary like no this could be anywhere it's could be a laser yeah. top corner or he's feeding it through the seam like uh it's hard to check so no, it's you're definitely told, something you yeah. know, that we work on now. And oh, for it's, sure, it's a definitely, yeah. definitely a big skill. That's something that, as a like a skills coach for me, that's something that I've like taken to the next level. Man, everything's got to yeah. be deceptive. You cannot look at the puck. You cannot look at where you're going with the puck. You need to like throw a layer or two of deception to somebody. Yeah, that's a big one. Like, yeah, you're right. It's so that's huge, right? And I, I think no, I think the other things that you mentioned are awesome, man. For young players, I think that that those are huge. Like those fundamental skills are massive, man. 100%. Okay, what we'll do, I know we got a lot of your time here, Booner, and I know you got to get to bed because you're getting old, but um, gotta uh, we got to... <laughs> what do we got tomorrow? Mitch, it depends, hey? What's on this... nah, tomorrow's What's on not top? too bad. We got, a, we got a structural day. It won't be too bad. That's hey, That's re real quick, though, I was just thinking, yeah. so we've had this question a couple times. Like, someone a couple weeks ago asked, um, can, like, can you work on Hockey IQ? And you mentioned Hockey yeah. IQ before. Now, what are some ways that you think you could that players like young players can work on developing their hockey IQ? Okay, I think I think video I think can yeah. help. I think you watch if say you're the low guy on the power play. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, low guy on the power play, you can watch your lot your power plays from that game and when you get it on your stick, where is it going? How quick, you know, does it how long does it take me to look? And see where that guy is you know and then in practice you maybe do it two or three times of okay now i'm not even gonna look at the puck i'm just gonna get it and i'm already gonna be looking and i think like that split second it could be like you know half a second a millisecond whatever but that's when they can't block the pass you make it through it's little mm -hmm. things like that work okay maybe you're maybe it's a skill right so now you know you're working on your passing but i think it's kind of more hockey iq where you're getting it and making that play on his tape, as opposed to maybe getting it blocked two or three or two out of four times. You're getting it through now three out of four times. It makes you look like you can see the ice better. Right. Yeah. So it kind of well, starts with like with looking at video or yeah, watching it, that, and then taking those things to to practice in games. That, and I, I think you can watch other players take things that they do. Like you watch someone with high hockey IQ. You know, like, okay, why? You know, like I can shoot yeah. this hard. I can skate just fast, but why does you know he get the job done more and you can try to sponge some of that stuff up and use that too mm -hmm. I, I think that's all, uh, unreal advice man and one thing too that and Boone, i know you and i've worked on this a bunch too is like is for young young kids especially but even for pros like on ice awareness like 
you say shoulder check, we always think like just like bang bang, and that means nothing. It's like taking pictures, looking at what's going on around you. But like the more you shoulder check, the more you're aware of what's going on around you, like the more confidence you have, the more time you think, you know, you you you're aware that you have, you know. So um to your point, I think the video is amazing. And I think the yeah, I think that's that, that's a huge, huge piece of it. And then you know, applying that into practice, like your shoulder checks, you're being aware on the ice, looking around. Like, I think that all that stuff is, is massive. Cause even like if I watch clips of you and, and whoever, and I, I clip them, it's crazy. And you guys probably don't even notice it, but a rim's coming around the boards and like you shoulder check three times before you get the rim. Yeah. Which, you know, for most kids, they don't even see it. Most spectators don't even see it, but like that, is, to me, that's a skill. Like that's a massive skill that like you've, yeah. it's a habit, right? You know, yeah. Even when you got it, you got to constantly work on it, right? Because totally. there'll be the odd one where you don't look and, you know, you just forget about it. You're worried about yeah. you know, the D-man over here at that point where. Sure. So I think it's constantly, you know, trying to get better at it. And I think it starts in practice and, you know, the muscle memory, whatever you want to call it, where if you do it enough there, it, you can translate it into the game. It'll Definitely. just happen for you. So. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, for sure, man. Cool. Right. Well, I, will, I got two, two quick questions. Yeah. Here's one from uh, Soller here. He's got, uh, how do you stay poised when holding on to the puck and um, make the right play when the game is moving so fast? So like, like a rim or like you're on a two on one or whatever's going on. Right. It's like, how do you make, how do you, how do you feel like, how do you, and I guess we kind of touched on a little bit there too, but how do you get poised with the puck under pressure, like pressure, pressure situations, yeah. speed it's, of the game. Uh, it's a reactive game, right? So uh, you're just constantly reading um, one rim. You might have more time than the other. And like you said, it goes back to your point of the shoulder check. If you don't shoulder check, you won't know. So um, you're just constantly reading and reacting. Um, it sounds cliche, but uh, I guess that's kind of how you know. Um, if you can take that extra look, um, that'll help you when, when you you know have that extra second to make the next play. And, uh, not every play is going to be like that. It's going to, it's like you said, it's a fast game. So uh, you might be getting there at the same point as the other guy and, and it might just be a chip or whatever. You just got to try to win the battle at that point. That's what you, you know, a 50, 50 puck. But uh, other times, if you take that extra little second to take a look, um, you know, some situations are even slowing yourself down. Some situations are getting there quicker. Um, you know, a lot of emphasis on that where it's always like go quicker, 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 but, um, you know, if you have a little space, sometimes taking, you know, you know, gliding for two seconds gives you a little bit more space to read the ice. And that's kind of when you can make your play. And uh, it's not like the game is moving slower. Then you just have more space to so take advantage of it. So uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm not poised all the time. Uh, <laughs> I try to be, but um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a skill. You know, it's when you see someone like he's got good poise. It's uh, I think he can just read the game well. Um, yeah, he can read pressure, and um, yeah, he's got he's got smarts, I guess. So um, yeah, I think it's just a read and uh, reaction from there. Oh, I, yeah, I think that's that's yeah, it's awesome. Very good. Um, and then one more here from my uh, Dorchester boy, Julian Stubden, who's a great guy. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, why did you decide to come back and do your, the hockey camps are free in Dorchester? So for anyone who doesn't know, Boone comes back every summer without, if you don't have COVID uh, and runs. Yeah, yeah, COVID. yeah. Runs a free hockey camp in Dorchester for the minor hockey players and brings in like some boys like Seth Jones came in and some of his buddies and, which is awesome, man, and and so cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like what I guess, you know, kind of what somebody said, like what made you decide to do that, and and uh, and how's that been going? How do you like it? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, like you said, I get some guys, um, ex teammates or teammates in town usually, and um, you know, we're not ready to be coaches yet. I'll tell you that much. Uh, <laughs> it's, out there, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, um, I don't know, Dorchester just. You know, obviously, has a special place in my heart. Uh, growing up there, my whole life, um, going to school there, playing the hockey there until I played uh, AAA for the Chiefs. So, special place in my heart, and I, you know, I just wanted to do something there. I know a lot of guys do, um, you know, a golf tournament or some fundraiser. But I thought it'd be fun to get all the the kids on the ice and um, you know meet some 
other NHLers and get to meet me. You know, I'm still around close by in the summer. And um, so I always enjoy going back there, going back to the rink that I, that I played in. And um, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's fun to see uh, everyone from your hometown and, and the kids uh, being excited and loving the game of hockey. And uh, they get a great new rink there. So I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. And I wanted to do something back there just because I am back here in the summers. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah. I remember like, I, I remember years ago, I think you had maybe called, call their text or something like, Hey Blazer, I might run a summer camp like for free in Dorch. Like, you have some drills for me or whatever, and, oh, and yeah, uh, I'm scrambling. Yeah, yeah, I know. No. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, like to your point, it's like it's not as easy as you like. You obviously have tons of drills, all good, like in your memory. But yeah, when you're dealing with like young kids and doing like summer camps and stuff, it's like it's not it's not like that easy. But it'll be mm-hmm. fine. And I think you probably realize pretty quick, like I don't want to do this for a living. I'd rather like just come in the NHL and be way better. <laughs> and I know a lot of drills, but trying to get thirty, yeah, thirty young ones to go yeah. through it at the same time and all listen is uh, yeah, that's, that's a different, that's, that's a little challenge. different. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's definitely different, but I mean it's fun, right? You got to experience it, and hundred uh, percent glad I was doing it, and hopefully I can do it a couple more times here. Uh, you know, after yeah, totally. You know the, the oh, pandemic here, so we'll see. Oh, I love it. Listen, buddy, I really, man, I really, really appreciate it. And um, I know we have a couple other questions we can get to, but we'll uh, we'll definitely thank you, everybody, for joining the live and 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 throwing some questions there, which is awesome. And Booner, I really appreciate your time, man. This is uh, no problem, guys. Great, great time. And um, oh, yeah, we'll awesome. See Always you. great to chat, and we'll yeah see you yeah, soon. Make, make yeah, we'll see you, buddy. Soon. Appreciate we'll about see twelve you hours. Too, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. totally. All right, um, you two guys stick on the line, and everyone else have a good night, and uh, we will uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. To kind of raise that bar, uh, that extra gear, the first three steps, huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today.